we at uh, the MHL Consortium uh, headquarters here in Sunnyvale. So yesterday you had a big event, right? Yep, we had a big press event in downtown San Francisco where we're showing off a number of use cases for MHL. Now that there's a full ecosystem, this is a Samsung uh, UN46D7000TV that we bought back in June. But what's exciting about it is that in October, I was able to go to Samsung's website, the support area, and download the latest firmware release, which was released in October, put it on a USB stick, plug it into the back of the TV, which uh, you'll see in just a second. And on one of those USB ports, uh, as soon as I turned the TV on, it recognized that there was a firmware upgrade. And it said, do you want to upgrade? I said, yes. And after uh, a few seconds of, um, yeah. of it uh, upgrading, I basically had an MHL TV. So port 3 on this Samsung TV is now an MHL HDMI port. So it will auto-recognize if you plug in an HDMI device like a PS3 or a set-top box, it will be HDMI. If you plug in this MHL cable that you see here, which is connected to my MHL phone, it will actually auto-switch from HDMI to MHL. And as you can see, it is charging the phone while I'm actually using it. The other thing that's cool is that the um, remote control for the Samsung TV, the IR remote control, actually controls the phone. And so I can go in and say, okay, let's look at this video and play it back. And see the beautiful picture, but this is I can a video be you recorded with this phone. Yes, and then I actually shot this with the phone, and I can say I want to look at that Lamborghini. So I hit pause on the remote control, and it pauses the video. I can then play it again. I can fast forward. I can pause it again. So I have full control of the phone, uh, but if I'm sitting on my couch, you know, watching a big screen TV. I still have control over it via the TV's remote control. Is this the second uh, TV on the market by big brand? Yes. MHL support? Yeah, Toshiba uh, released their Regza WL800A TVs. Uh, and now with a firmware upgrade, the Samsung D7000 series and D8000 series are can be upgraded to MHL via firmware. So all the, all the new TVs by all these companies are all going to be MHL compatible? That's my hope. Uh, unfortunately, they don't actually share their individual product plans with me. But I know that the Samsung D7000, D8000 series, uh, which have been shipping all year, are now upgrade compatible and you know, Toshiba has their two models. Does now. it add to the price of the TV to have that functionality? Or is it just I, a I, question don't, of I don't think so because, you know, like I said, they've been shipping it for, you know, I bought mine back in uh, June and you know, with a free firmware upgrade, I was able to make it an MHL TV. So what do you need in a TV? Is, is like a dollar little chip somewhere that does it? Um, or? Again, that's... Uh, you know, each manufacturer works with the different silicon companies. I believe uh, the product in this uh, TV is a silicon image chip that manages all the HDMI ports and basically the newer chips this year uh, have MHL on them. So uh, the port processor that basically allows you to switch between the ports knows that on port 3 of the Samsung TV it's MHL or HDMI. Uh, but as far as cost, it's really uh, between the silicon provider, silicon image and Samsung. So what, you, what else did you show at the event yesterday? So we also showed gaming that, um, uh, you know, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of games on here, um, that you can game. And I use a Bluetooth mouse to game uh, because that's the most capable uh, remote control right now. But there's no reason why a PS3 remote control or a Wii remote control, which are both Bluetooth based, that you couldn't use those kind of wireless controllers. And then what I think is cool is that, you know, when the iPad first came out and you had tablets in the market, you didn't have a lot of apps. It took a while for tablets you know, to have apps, but now there's definitely a category of phone apps, which are you know, a dollar, two dollars, and you have a tablet app search for four, five, six dollars. There needs to be TV apps. You have, you know, t the biggest difference between a phone and tablet is a bigger screen and more resolution. Well, I've got 1920 by 1080 to play with, so you know, when I play these games, you know, they, they look absolutely beautiful. Let's pick uh, uh, So this Jordan. app is optimized for 1080 or? Uh, it's not, uh, but, it's, but it looks a lot better on a big screen than a small screen. You know, in the end, eye strain is a big issue with smartphones. Um, and so instead of using a small screen to play the game, you know, let's use a bigger screen. I mean, so, you know, and this is a tower defense game. But the point is, is that uh, with gaming, you know, app developers can now have a bigger screen to work with. And also, if they want to do split screen, 
um, as well as uh, why not enable multiple wireless controllers so you can play with your friends, have you know multiplayer games. Um, so to me, the, the sky's the limit, and you've now turned your phone into a wireless uh, into a gaming console, you know, with wireless controllers. So you know, yes, you, you know, PS3 and you know Xbox 360 and Nintendo Wii's will still be there, but you now have a way to you know easily and quickly set up a, a gaming party. So you just disrupted another market. Uh, yes, but but I think it's complementary because the developers who develop for 360 and uh, PS3 can quickly port their game to a phone platform, charge less for it, and it, and it won't be as feature rich. You know, you want the real immersed gaming experience. You, you know, you're going to go to PS3, but maybe for twenty dollars you get a Call of Duty Lite that works great on a phone, looks better than you know just on the phone. You know, it would be hard to play it on the phone with such a small screen, but I'd love to play it on a TV, connect to the phone, and then I always have my phone with me. What so I, think, I always uh, have a game with me. What I think Nintendo should do is provide uh, 5,000 games from Nintendo 1, uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, and do the same thing with PS1, PS2, and original Xbox. There's and no reason why those, those can't... The processors on these phones are much better than the processors in those old consoles, so they should be able to work. They could easily make a few billion dollars like that, Absolutely. just selling the games at one dollar yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And even uh, you know, because we you have the remote control capability now, you know, even have the remote control have some of that capability, so you could play the games even without a wireless controller, just with up, down, left, right. You know, and just some of the simpler games. And you've tried the Bluetooth remotes uh, by yeah. Nintendo or some of the others? So, Does so there, um, I, I've seen it on YouTube, on the web, that people have modded their um, uh, phones to be able to link, or actually they've created custom apps that link to Nintendo Wii and to Sony PS3 controllers, and they're able to use the controller with the phone. Um, so, you know, to me, it's, it's coming. Cool. And what other things did you show? So it was that, and um, we also showed media playback. That if I basically go to, you know, some place like YouTube, um, you know, again, if you have, uh, a, you know, this is a smart TV, so it actually can connect to YouTube directly. But you know, in the case where I don't have it connected to the network, uh, I can connect to my phone, and then you know, we can sit here and again with remote control, I can say, okay, I actually don't know any. Let's look at. A Coldplay video, and oh, there's some rights issues. You shouldn't play the okay. song. Maybe. Okay. That's but cool. but you see that I'm able to basically use YouTube, um, you know, and play it on a bigger screen. Is this a UI? Is not HD optimized yet. They could do it even more, not, right? Well, it's whatever the the video is. So if the video, uh, you know, you saw the HQ pop up. So if it's at uh, 480, 720. Uh, the phone, if it's displaying it, will display it on the TV correctly too. And let's uh, let's check the web browser mode. Sure. Is that what you would call the office mode, or what do you call it? Um, yeah. So that's more of a desktop experience. That if I go to my browser and say I bring up, oh, sorry. Okay, I didn't log into Facebook. So let's. And on my Bluetooth keyboard, so I'm going to type. So let's go to. Uh, arm Oops. devices dot net right yeah I hear that's a great site yeah it's really interesting and it just loads nearly as fast as on a laptop and I even get uh, the videos as well so you know as I you know I can go through all the videos. They'll load their uh, thumbnail in a second. But so keyboard and mouse has yeah. to be Bluetooth. No USB yet. Host? No, no USB yet. Um, the the problem is going to be with USB is uh, you're already using the port uh, from the phone. The USB port it's switched to MHL mode. So uh, at this point you can't connect USB devices. But um, it's uh, you know this is a gingerbread phone which doesn't have USB connectivity for mouse and keyboard yet anyway. Um, but you know, Bluetooth works just fine, um, and so does the remote control. That I Is there anything play. else you you have been maybe experimenting with to try to add? Uh, when you have the little uh, box, uh, what's it called? It's in here. People oh, do buy this, right? So this is an HDMI adapter. So basically, 
you know, the Samsung TV and the Toshiba TVs we talked about earlier are MHL TVs, so you can use this thin cable yeah. and connect, you know, there's no uh, active components of this cable, so this connects a MHL enabled phone to an MHL enabled TV. But if you don't have an MHL enabled TV, and you, you have your you know, big TV already mounted on the wall and you don't want to change it out, then you can use this adapter, which basically converts MHL to HDMI. So then uh, now, essentially, I can still have the MHL experience. Uh, the power charger for the phone actually plugs into the, the adapter because you need to power the uh, converter chip, and the MHL experience is always about charging the phone while you use it. Um, because the nice thing is, you know, I can run demos all day, I can watch videos all day, I can game all day, and when I'm done, I'm fully charged. And, and that's a huge benefit. But could you add, couldn't you add a couple of four full-size HDMI ports on here? Um, I guess someone could design that. Um, there's actually a better design um, that I've seen uh, in the works where there is, uh, in, what it would look like is a HDMI cable on this side that plugs into your TV and then this port on this side becomes an HDMI or MHL port, just like this TV uh, that has MHL built in. So it actually becomes, you don't lose your HDMI port. If you want to use it for HDMI, plug in an HDMI cable. If you want to use it for MHL, plug in an MHL cable, but it will auto switch. So that's, to me, a very interesting adapter that's coming out soon that basically allows you to, to essentially enable your legacy HDMI only TV to have a dual purpose MHL HDMI port. So, how soon do you think people are going to stop buying laptops and just use MHL? Uh, I'm close. Uh, so, you know, I can go in and edit my presentations on the phone now. Browsing is okay, but, you know, what has to happen is more TV apps need to happen. You know, where just like uh, when, you know, the tablets first came out, it took a while for tablets apps to really take off. Now that you have this great TV experience, I need to have the high resolution apps. So I want to be able to edit a document without, you know, a great example is when I go into, um, let's see, you know, messaging and I type a message and as soon as I type what you'll see is, you know, the big gigantic keyboard comes up. Well, if I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard, you know, an external keyboard, then I don't need that extra keyboard. And you can see that the font and everything is, is made for a phone. So this is where, you know, the, the phone needs to understand it's connected to a high resolution display, kind of like your laptop is today. When I connect my laptop to an external monitor, it understands that, you know, this is a bigger screen, it's got more resolution, I can do more with it. It doesn't just mirror the laptop. So we need that same experience on phones. Um, I'd love to have um, a desktop on the phone where I have a home screen and I have multiple windows that I can do things with. If you think about it, the phone already multitasks. You know, I can run games, I can get phone calls, I get text messages, I get emails in the background, but because of the small screen, I only can see one of those things at a time. Um, it'd be great if there were essentially a way to essentially have this desktop experience. Did you have a, a like TV. a presentation showing that? Yeah, so, you know, that's actually one of the things that I'm trying to get uh, application companies uh, and development, uh, Android developers to start embracing is that, you know, let's have an actual uh, PC desktop. Uh, so and three things at the same time, plus another thing even on yeah, the top? Yeah, so I got my home screen, so I can always control and go to different apps, but I've got my email, I've got text messaging, I've got Facebook, um, you know, because in the end I have 1920 by 1080 to work with. I've got a lot of resolution, might as well use it. Rather than just mirroring the small UI of the phone, let's expand the UI, essentially expand your mobile world is our new tagline, and use the, the phone to its fullest. And the phone totally knows that it's being connected with HDMI. It actually, uh, well, it can tell that it's doing TV out and that's connected to a TV. So it should um, switch into so should, Google TV mode. Uh, that, that would be awesome, where it can, uh, but do, you know, I like to do more than just Google TV. If you think about it, uh, Google TV is a separate set-top box, you know, just like Apple TV is, but you think about how much, you know, how many apps there are for your phone, uh, how much, how many people are working to make your phone a better product, you know, that's what MHL, you know, the elegance of MHL is all about. Let's just make the big screen experience for your phone a better experience, because you've already got everything you want on your phone. People, you know, you say people carry their lives around on their hips. Let's just make it more capable rather than having to go to a separate device. And then there's also, uh, it would be nice to have a full Chrome browser. Yes, like Google a full-featured full browser 
yeah. where you know it's doing flash, it's doing you know, and I can do multiple tabs and it's fast switching. That would be awesome. Not a mobile phone browser, but no. a no, a full HD desktop, desktop browsing browser. experience. Absolutely. So basically, you combine Android with Chrome OS with Google TV and with uh, yeah, put Ubuntu. it all on the phone, uh, image on the TV, and you're done. At that point, I wouldn't need to carry a laptop or a tablet around. So, is it guaranteed that we can have this for sure in 2012 all uh, over the place? I, I don't know about timing. Um, you know, this is on you know developers deciding that they can make money off of it, that it's a focus for them, but it's not um, invisible. This is all things that just need some attention and need uh, people to work on. So, you know, please comment on this video, ask people to work on it, and maybe we can uh, all make this happen. Maybe that's what uh, Google has done with with ice cream sandwich. I hope so. That would be awesome. That would be fantastic. And so you have more and more phones coming out with Image Shell. Basically, all the new phones are coming out with it. That, that's what I'm seeing. Um, you know, again, the individual uh, product launch plans of all my companies, uh, all the MHL member companies, uh, don't share it with me. But you know, given if you look at our website on who's recently joined, you know, companies like LG, Lenovo, Dell, HP, Pantech. You know, so they're uh, Kenwood JVC. I mean, they're, there's uh, companies, uh, tier one. You know, very well-known OEM companies are, you know, with brands are coming at, are embracing MHL, hopefully developing products with MHL. So I expect to see a whole lot of interesting products coming out. So everybody's on the MHL list, except maybe Motorola. So Motorola is not, uh, RIM is not, and Apple is not right now. But uh, you know, as you can ex uh, expect, you know, we're trying. Try my, yeah, my my goal as the president of MHL is to try to get the world to embrace MHL and so I'm not going to leave any company behind. I'm going to try and make sure everyone understands the standard, uses it and sees the potential.